Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on conjoint analysis. If you recall, in one of the earlier sessions we discussed how we can generate an orthogonal design. Well, after you generated your orthogonal design, usually the next step is you go outside and calculate or gather data for the different cards you generated, the different configurations you generated. Well, this has been done in the data set we see here. So in the example, we had nine different cards. So here as well, nine different cards. We see for each of the cards, we uh, generated our data. So we have nine different variables and all nine variables are in line. So it starts with the first, second, third and so forth. So this is basically combination 1, combination 2, and so forth. With this in mind, we would like to run our conjoint analysis. Downside to this, as compared to all the other methods discussed in this methodology, we cannot find conjoint analysis here in Analyze. However, we have the possibility to use with File, New, and Syntax the syntax error and run it by hand. And in the end, well, I will just paste the code here. This doesn't look so complex and it actually isn't so complex. So we always start with conjoint, telling him run conjoint analysis. Then he needs some information on the plan and on the data source. So here with the plan, it's address and name of the file which contains our orthogonal design. Similarly with data, here's the path and the name of the data set, we can see this up here, which contains the information on our data collected with regards to this orthogonal design. In this case it can be mentioned that, well, obviously you can give the information for both of them, for the plan and the data, if one of the two sets is already open, if the two data files are already open in SPSS, you do not have to state this one in particular. Meaning, here our data set is opened, so we could just erase this part here. So we would not need the information on data. It's not possible to erase both of them and have both data sets opened, but you can make it a bit shorter by open one of the two parts and just skip it here in the code. Well, so far for specifying which data to use. Then we have like a third part here. In this case it's called score, meaning the variables n01 to n09, they contain scores. We can see this here in the back still. Each of the different combinations, each of the different possibilities is ranked with a score from 1 to 5. So this gives us the command score. Tells us first variable, we start with n01, then it goes up to n09. This then is an important aspect to note, all those variables need to be in sequence. So it needs to be start with N01, then all the other variables contain suitable necessary information and it stops with N09. So it's not allowed that you have any variables somewhere in between here. Okay, this is only for scores, so having someone give a well, evaluation for each specific combination. There are two alternatives. You could also use rank or you could use sequence. Sequence, then someone has to align them in some kind of sequence, ascending, descending, or rank those nine different possibilities need to be ranked. Then we would specify here, not with score, but with rank or with sequence, and you would run this slightly differently. In this case, as our data scores, we use the score command. Then we select the whole part we want to have calculated. 
and click here on this small arrow which is just for as we can see here run our selection we click here and he switches to our output and with the output we get here the main interesting part which is basically our part utility values meaning we get the utility estimate for each of the different characteristics. We could use those results to then calculate like the monetary part utilities meaning we select first off a reference value from each category and then relate this to the corresponding monetary values. This would give us like how much more would color black or color red if silver were the baseline be worth? How much would having a cabriolet be worth if the baseline is no? This however is not reported with SPSS. This we need to do by hand. And finally an interesting aspect is here the importance values telling us which of the three parts is the most important one regarding the evaluations as seen with the data set. In this case we can see the most important one that's here the F3 that's the price. Then there's whether it's cabriolet or not and the least important one that's the color of our car. Finally we get here with Pearson's R or Candles Tau some kind of measure whether our analysis is actually good, is actually decent enough and as we can see here it's the correlation between the observed and estimated preferences as this is highly significant reports high values so we are very good in actually um, describing the results so this means as soon as the test here the significance in this context for this test is below 5% we can say that our model works suitably enough that we can trust in our result and well this then was everything I would wanted to tell you regarding conjoint analysis with SPSS. I hope you enjoyed listening to this short part and well learned something from it. If you're interested in seeing more of this type of videos, feel free to re visit the rest of this SPSF methodology. Until then, see you and goodbye.